Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Bible Study for the Siwang Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. We are located in Bayan or city proper, Silang Kabidi. However, if you're joining us from the someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines, Silang Kabidi is approximately 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport or downtown Manila. We are glad that you are with us today, and we hope that our study of God's word is of benefit to you. Marvin, you got a ball pen handy? Very good. As always, we start with prayer request. Miss Vanessa. Uh, sir, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mom Cora. Um, my prayer request, sir, is of course Thanksgiving for the blessings that we receive every day and the guidance and protection as always for the family and for the for our congregation. Okay. Miss Janet, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, please continue to pray my the examination of my son and unspoken prayer and also my sister, youngest sister. Okay. Also, sir, thank you. Miss Raquel, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Of course, <clears throat> there's a lot of things we need to give thanks and my prayer request is enlightenment for me and my husband and protection for all for the entire family thank you okay. miss jovi good morning good morning sir good morning everyone uh still my prayer request for my nephews uh, enlightenment and uh, wisdom and guidance for him and uh, good health for my uh, entire family and for all of us as well that's all sir okay Mr. Giselle good morning uh, good morning sir good morning everybody um, my prayer request as always sir enlightenment uh, knowledge and protection and thanksgiving to all the blessing that's all sir okay Ms. Cora, good morning, beautiful woman. You're muted. You're muted. Good morning, all, everyone. Uh, the same prayer request for healing prayers. Rosella, Claudio, Mr. Kelly, uh, Teresa, and Daryl's wife. Miss Beth, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, my prayer request, uh, more knowledge and wisdom, good health, more strength, protection for my house, and for protection for my entire family. Okay. Miss Wilma, good, uh, good morning. Your sister-in-law's chemo was today, right? 25, sir. 25, okay. That'll be Friday, then. Uh, continuous prayer for my sister-in-law. Okay. It looks like Julie and Seth are trying to get in the room, are they? Okay. We'll let them in in a minute as soon as they get up and running. Uh, Marvin, how's uh, your teacher doing? Just doing good, sir. Thanks for the prayer. Okay. And here comes Julie. Julie, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My prayer request is good health for everybody and guidance. That's it. Okay. All right, Marvin, you got it. Okay, join me in prayer, guys. Dear Father, the creator of the world, the source of mercy and love, uh, we say thanks for the blessings that we always receive, for the protection and for the guidance. 
Uh, Father, may you guide us as we are about to study your word. And we also have prayer requests this morning for Sister Vanessa. Thanksgiving for the blessings that she always received. And may you provide guidance and protection for her entire family. For Sister Janet, may you um, provide his son a guidance for the upcoming ex examination that he will have. Uh, for Sister Raquel, enlightenment for her and her husband. For Sister Jovi, uh, enlightenment, wisdom, and guidance for her nephew, and as well as good health for her entire family. For Sister Giselle, we pray for the enlightenment, knowledge, and protection for her. For Mem Cora, we pray, uh, we pray, uh, we pray these people, uh, Rosella, Claudio, Kelly, Teresa, Gerald's wife, may you provide them continuous um, healing and strength. And for Sister Beth, provided, may you provide her knowledge and wisdom. And for Sister Wilma, continuous, prayer, continuous healing for her sister Indo. For Ati Julie, we pray for the good health and guidance for her entire family. And we also include here in our prayer, my teacher Abby, may you provide her strength and continuous healing. We say this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, open your Bibles, please, to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Chapter 4. Vanessa, start us in 17, please. 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 17 says... For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Okay. Barbara, verse 18, please. Verse 18. And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Scarcely, by the way. Scarcely. Okay, um, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, is it easy to serve God and to be saved? Miss Vanessa? Is it easy to serve, sir? Is it easy to serve God and be saved? Yes, sir, it is. If you're obeying his... His command. Okay, as read 17 to 18 again and tell me, does the scripture say that it's easy uh, or hard? Marvin? Yeah, please. Um, it's not easy, sir, because once we become Christian, um, there are people who will persecute us. They will not be happy for the decisions that we made. Okay. Janet? Yes, sir. Is it easy to be saved, to follow God, obey God, and to be saved? First Peter chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. No, sir. Yes, it's easy? No, sir. It's, it's, it, okay. It, it's not easy, sir. Miss Raquel? It is not easy, sir. Okay. It is not easy. Jovi? It, it's not easy, sir. It's not easy. Because? Uh, because uh, the uh, we have to obey uh, the word of God, but it's not that easy because the, uh, how can I say it? There's a lot of challenges uh, that uh, part of it. Uh, obeying the word of God. Good morning. We're in First Peter chapter four, verse seventeen and eighteen. Chris, Giselle, is it easy to serve God and be and to be saved? Uh, no, sir. It is not easy because uh, in in real world, uh, there is so many temptation, and you your faith must be strong 
so that you can fight for all the temptation. Okay, Cora? No, it's not easy because as what Giselle said, it is true that there's a lot of challenge um, and there is a lot of uh, hindrance along okay. the way so that you will not, so that the devil will, will get you. Okay, Miss Beth? No, sir, it's not very, it's not easy. Okay, Miss Wilma? It's not easy, sir. Okay, Julie? <laughs> no, sir, it's not. What do you think, Chris? It is not, but that what that what makes life interesting. Okay. Now, the next question I'm going to ask you, it's a, it's supposed to cause you to think and there is no right or wrong answer, but I want to hear your reasoning. Should Christians be told about the trouble? Should people be told about the trouble being a Christian will bring you before they are saved? If yes, why? If not, why not? Marvin? I think no. Because? Because, because well, we should expect that um, life is uncertain. Um, time will come that challenges will uh, hinder us to do, uh, to serve God, uh, such as temptations. So uh, we have to expect that when uh, once we serve God, challenges will come upon us. And as long as, and as, long as we are serving God, uh, e devil, the evil will uh, continuously come. Okay. Uh, Miss Janet? So just like the story of Job. Um, Should people be told about the troubles that being a Christian is going to put in their life? Yes or no? No, sir. Why not? Who's typing? I call a friend, sir. Can I call a friend, sir? What's that? It, it's your opinion. Why are you going to call a friend for your opinion? I can't explain, sir. It's okay. hard for me to explain. That's fine. Miss Raquel? Um, no. No? Uh, why, why not? When I see this verse, uh, 1 Peter 4, verse 12, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trials when it comes upon you to test you. So it means there's a lot of testing point here on earth. That's why it's no. Okay. Jovi. Sir, again, what's the question? Should Christians be told about the troubles that being a Christian is going to bring them? I, I think yes. Okay, why? Because uh, the more you attach uh, 
with the word of God, the more you wanted to obey, the more uh, temptation and uh, conflicts, troubles you may encounter. Yes. Along, along. We should tell people this. Why? It's as um it's a test of uh how your faith will uh stand uh, up under pressure it's a test of your faith i guess i think sir okay missed yourself i think sir no because um being a Christian is uh, very hard to explain to all the people that if you are a Christian, you will be safe. Because as uh, so many uh, um, believers that they are the one who will save, not the Christians. Okay. Cora. Okay. Um. Tell me if I understand your question. Being, you said, do you want, as a Christian, you want other Christian to understand and to know that there are like some challenges coming their way if you become a Christian? Is that what the question is? When you are working with someone in order to convert them, okay, should you tell them ahead of time how much trouble they're going to have remaining a Christian? Um, this is my own opinion. Yeah, this is, a, this is an opinion question. There are no rights or wrongs. I understand that. I think we try to evangelize with other people and to tell them what's the good news, what's the things that we can see uh, ahead of us, what are the, what are the nice things things that God promised uh, promised to us but at the same time we have to tell them that when you go the straight line there are some people who would pull you out of the straight line there are some people and even the devil will challenge you and put you to test so that you can get out of the line where you're going a straight line okay so the answer for me is yes you're supposed to you're supposed to tell them what are the challenges and the obstacles that around you and around, you know, being a Christian, people will, will say something bad about you. Uh, and then some of your relatives will say something, you know, changes that you did to your life. So you, there are some challenges that's, that's going to be on the way. And that's yes, because you love Jesus. Okay. Miss Beth? I can find it in the Bible, but sir, uh, call up and call. call uh, well, friend, you, you, it, this is your opinion. Who? Why do you need to call a friend for your opinion? That's all right. Should we tell Christians about the troubles they are going to have as a Christian before they become a Christian? Yes, sir. Can I probably? Go ahead, Chris. Okay. Um, I'd say yes. So it's like when you take an exam, I just wanted to set an example. When you take an exam, you will have questions that, you know, you need to learn and you have some questions that you may not understand. And there is some problem solving in the examinations that are really hard. So the question is, are you willing to take that exam? So, <clears throat> yeah, I would say yes. It's uh, you. You know, you have to inform them because if are they willing to be, yeah, um, 
are they going are they willing to go to heaven if yes this is the this is the thing that you have to go through being a christian okay yeah so that the question is the answer is yes okay miss wilma Um, uh, for me, sir, it's a yes and a no. Yes, because uh, so that uh, they will be aware that there will be a lot of trials and tribulations along the way, and no, because uh, if you are talking to a person that you want them to be a Christian, they might be thinking that uh, I will not do it because it will be hard for me to follow. Okay. Julie. Yes, for me, sir, because we can encourage people. Um, we can teach them. Um, yes, teach them um, the gospel. But I'll agree with also with mommy because not all all of the people in this earth um, obey the word of God. Some of them will refuse even when you teach them. But I'll agree, uh, but I'll go with um, yes, because it is written in the scriptures that all scriptures is God-breathed and it is useful for rebooking, correcting, teaching in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, you know where to find that? Yes, First Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen, seventeen. Second Timothy, but okay. a second. Seth. Sir. Should we tell people the problems they will encounter as a Christian before they become a Christian? In between of yes and no. Yes, we can. We can tell them about and regarding on the consequences when they try to follow the word of God, but there's a no, so they can overcome all the challenges by themselves. Okay. Um, I'm going to say yes, because if you don't, Matthew chapter 13, verse 41 applies. Janet, get that for us. Matthew 13, 41. The son 21, of man 13, is, 21, sorry. 13, 21. 13, Matthew 13, 21. Yet he held in himself the the tribulation of persecution arises you're muted janet try it now yes sir go ahead matthew 13 21 yet he has no roof in himself but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the world, immediately he falls away. Do we want people to go to heaven? Yeah, I hope the yeah. answer is yes. However, if we don't tell them that there will be troubles, they are more prone to fall away. Listen, I can turn on my TV or go to YouTube and listen to somebody who tells me, if you become a Christian, you will automatically be wealthy and you will never again be sick. Scripture, in order to say that, you kind of have to twist the scriptures because that's not what it says. And we don't want people to fall away. We want them to go, we want them to make it to heaven with us. 
Uh, I don't know how memory is going to work in heaven. But you may be there without all your friends. You may be there without your family. But God tells us there will be no sadness. So how that's going to work out, I don't know. Uh, there is no, go ahead. There is, there is no tears in heaven. And there's no pain in heaven. So as what I heard before, when you get to heaven, you don't have the memory of who are those people that are not there. Because okay. if you have a memory of the people that's not there, then you're going to have pain and you have suffering because they're not there and the bible says there's no tears there's no pain okay first peter chapter 4 verse 19 raquel first peter chapter 4 verse 19 therefore let those who suffer according to god's will entrust their souls to a faithful cre creator while doing good. So do what? Read it for me again. First uh, Peter 4 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator who doing good. Okay, so we have to entrust our souls to God for doing good right what does all of that mean if we read 17 through 19 together what really is the meaning so then those who suffer according to God's spirit Raquel It's it means that we need to trust God, even we are encountering trials, and the word says that not only the Christian have the trials, but also the sinners. But most of all, uh, only the Christian who obey God has more trials than the sinners. Okay. Because God God makes it rain upon the just and the unjust. We're going to notice as we've read through the book of 1 Peter, we're closing it on chapter 5. It's going to be close. Um, we're going to notice that suffering seems to be a frequent occurrence in this book. That Peter is making it a point to warn people that they are going to suffer and it's going to be according to the will of God. As Christians, we're expected to accept the penalty that is going to be infl inflicted on the world around us. We know that the world hated Christ and then we expect it to hate us also because scripture says so. All right, chapter five, verse one. Chapter five, verse one. I'm gonna to have to pick up pace a little bit. Miss Joey, chapter five, verse one. First Peter chapter five, verse one. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. So, what does, read that verse for me again, there's a word, exhort. What does that word exhort mean? Exhort means? Jovi? I really don't know, sir. I will uh, ask Mr. Google. <laughs> now, wait, let's see if the rest of the class knows. Somebody tell me what it means to exhort. Exhort. Lifting up. To encourage, right? To help each other. That's what we're supposed to do is help each other to get closer to heaven. We see when it says elders, uh, these are the men that we saw that had 
oversight of the church. We saw their qualifications in 1 Timothy chapter 3, Titus chapter 1. That's where they are. Which are among you? You'll notice here that the elders have no authority over disciples when they're not in the same congregation. If we take a look at the command of the Apostle Paul, go to T Acts chapter 14, verse 23. Acts chapter 14, verse 23. Mr. Self. Garage. Acts chapter 14, verse 23. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they have believed. Right. So we notice the elders are among them and the Paul appointed elders. It doesn't, does it say elder? No, it doesn't say elders. It's the elders, it's plural. Elders, uh, where? At every church. So that each church is really kind of on its own. Titus chapter 1, verse 5, Cora. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. One five. Titus chapter 1, verse 5, it says, I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother, Louise, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded, now lives in you also. Okay. So what we see here is that we oh, can... Go ahead, Cora. Why did it go there? I saw title. Sorry, sorry. Titus 1. I, I read the wrong one. Titus okay. 1. Chapter Verse one, four. what? Oh, four. Uh, to Titus, my true son, in our common one faith. five. Sorry. Oh, okay. One five. It says the reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town, as I directed you. So what when Paul left Titus in Crete, why did he do it? Because he has some unfinished uh, unfinished job. And what was that unfinished business? I think that was teaching. That's not what the scripture says. What does the scripture say in Titus chapter one and verse five? That you that you might have to put things in order. And keep going. What is what needs to be put in order? What was left unfinished or undone? Read it. Uh, the reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders. Oh, appoint elders in every town. As I directed so you. What was left so undone? To appoint the elders. Where? One elder over all the churches? No, in every town. In every town, they're supposed to have their own elders, correct? Yes. Okay. Verse 2. Verse 2. Uh, Beth? First Peter chapter 5, verse 2. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you. Okay. Not, for shame, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Okay, so when an elder serves, he should do it how? Not out of compulsion, not being forced to do it, but doing it. One of the things we need to understand is that the, the flock does not belong to the elder. It belongs to God. And the word here is exactly the same word that 
Jesus Christ spoke to Peter. John chapter 21, verse 16. John chapter 21, verse 16. Julie? John chapter 21, verse 16, said here, You said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know what I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. Tend my sheep. Look after the sheep. Who do the sheep belong to? Do they belong to Peter? No, yes. they belong to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Um, when life gets hard, when there are troubles, lukewarm elders are just not going to work. Peter really encourages the elders here not to fall under the pressure of the times. And this is also something we might see in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Chris? First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. So if you aspire or want to be an elder, you're desiring a noble task, right? One of the things we have to be aware of is that uh, the Christian walk is not a walk to a peaceful garden. It really involves a fight, a war, if you will. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven. Seth. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Okay, so I have finished the fight. Does it sound like Paul's talking about a peaceful walk in a park? No. no, it's a fight. Paul also encourages Timothy to behave to behave in a certain way. Second Timothy chapter two, verse four. Miss Vanessa, Second Timothy chapter three. Let me let woman in the room. Second Timothy chapter two, verse four. Second Timothy chapter two, verse four says, No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. So, number one, Paul addresses it in Second Timothy chapter two, verse four, as a the life of a soldier, right? But he carries on. Second Timothy chapter two, verse five, Marvin. Second to me, to Timothy chapter two, verse five says, an athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Okay. So what we see here is that the Christian walk is a war, a soldier at war. The Christian walk can be compared to the life of a professional athlete. Can you be a professional athlete if you never go to the gym? Marvin? No. No. Uh, we have to understand that self-discipline and hard work was referred to by Jesus... He referred to the walk in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Janet. Matthew 
Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Pick up his cross and follow me. So Paul referred to the Christian life of that of a soldier at war. He described it as the life of a, of a professional athlete working on it all the time. And Jesus Christ told us we have to do what? Pick up your cross and follow me. Does this sound like some where they're trying to tell us that we're going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise and never have problems once we become Christians? No. And if you get people to become Christians by making false promise, are they going to stay Christian? When the troubles come, they will go away. And I know I gave you back a few minutes on Friday, so I stole it back today. <laughs> 